Wow, we are going to learn so many cool things on this homeschool pop video. All right, what's the first thing we should learn? How about goods and services? What goods and services are and how to tell the difference. The first thing we need to understand is that everything you buy is either a good or a service. A good is something you can touch with your hands, like a skateboard. A skateboard is a good. It's something you can buy and you can touch with your hands. Now a service is a job you pay someone else to do. A great example of that is painting a house. Painting a house is a service. It's a job you pay someone else to do. So, a good is something you can touch with your hands, and a service is a job you pay someone else to do. Let's look at some more examples. A car is a good. It's something you can touch. A car wash is a service. It's something you pay someone else to do. If you were to buy a roll of carpet, that is a good. It's something you can touch. But laying carpet is a service. When it gets installed, that is a service. Last example, a pair of shoes is a good. If you bought shoes, that's a good. That's something you can touch. But if your shoes break, the shoe repair is a service. It's a job that you pay someone else to do. Everything we buy is either a good, something we can touch with our hands, or a service, a job we pay someone else to do. So let's give you a try. Help us figure out if it is a good or a service. We're going to do a little game that we call at Homeschool Pop, good or service. We're going to show you a picture and you're going to tell us whether you think it's a good or a service. Here's our first one. Bread. Bread is a... is it a good or a service? Yeah, bread is a good. It's something you can touch. Try this one. Baking a cake. Baking a cake is a... You know which one? It's a service. It's a job you pay someone else to do. What about this one? A medical checkup. A medical checkup is a... Is it a good or a service? Yeah, it's a service. It's a job you pay someone else to do. What about this one? A bicycle. A bicycle is a... Yeah, it's a good. It's something that you buy that you can actually touch. Good job. We all like this one. Pizza delivery is a... Do you know which one it is? A good or a service? It's a service. It's a job you pay someone else to do. Here's our last one. A pizza is a... We had to do this <laughs> after the pizza delivery. What is a pizza? A pizza is a good. It's something that you buy that you can actually touch. Awesome job. Thanks for playing. Everything you buy is a good or a service. A good is something you can touch. A service is a job you pay someone else to do. Well, that wraps it up. Next time you buy something, you can ask yourself, am I buying a good or a service? And you'll know the right answer because you watched this whole video. Oh, oh this is such a heavy cart. Oh my goodness. Oh.
whew, it's hard work. You know, a lot of times learning can be hard work too, but we hope that these videos are really helpful and make learning fun so that learning isn't hard like pushing this cart. Oh my goodness. All right, uh, what's the next thing we should learn about? Let's learn about the purpose of government. Governments are formed to keep people safe and to help people work together. The government does that by making laws. Laws are rules made by the government to keep people safe and to help people work together. You see, laws are the way governments fulfill their purpose to keep people safe and to help people work together. Some laws you might know. What about this one? You must not cross the road when the light is red. This is an important law because it keeps people safe. It keeps people safe and that's one of the main purposes of government is to keep people safe. If you cross the road when the light is red, you can get hurt. So they set up a law. You must not cross the road when the light is red. What about this law? You must not drive faster than the speed limit. This is a law the government set up because it wanted to help keep people safe and help people work together. When you drive faster than the speed limit, you can hurt yourself and you can hurt other people. It's not safe. Now, it also doesn't help people work together because when you're on the road with other drivers, you're working together to get to where you need to go and you need everyone to follow the laws. You must not drive faster than the speed limit is a law because it keeps people safe and it helps people work together. Here's one I'm sure that you know. You must not steal things. This is a law that's very important because it keeps people's possessions safe and it helps people work together. You can't work together and help other people if you're taking things that belong to them. That is why the government has a very important law that you must not steal things. When you steal things, it hurts other people, it doesn't keep people safe, and it doesn't help people work together. The purpose of government is to keep people safe and to help people work together. But how does the government make sure people follow the laws? Police officers! Police officers make sure people follow the laws and catch people who don't. They also keep our communities safe and help people who are in trouble. Then, after they've been caught by the police, the court system helps decide if a person has broken a law and what the punishment should be. The purpose of government is to keep people safe and to help people work together. The government doesn't just write laws and enforce them. The government also provides many services. Services like fire departments. That's something the government runs because it helps keep people safe. It's part of the purpose of the government to keep people safe. And that's why they provide the service of fire departments. The government also provides the postal service. The postal service is the way that we send letters and packages and all kinds of fun things. And it helps us work together. That's part of the purpose of government, is to help us work together. And the postal service helps us do that. That's why the government provides that service. 
The government also provides the services of libraries. Libraries are very, very important, and the government runs those because libraries teach us and we get knowledge. And with that knowledge, it helps us work together. That's why the government provides libraries. The government also provides public schools. This is very, very important because everyone has the right to learn. And when we learn and when we get an education, we are able to work together better, which is why the government provides schools. The government also provides the services of the military who protect us here and overseas, and it's very important for us to be safe. The government has to keep us safe, and the government does that through the service of brave men and women who serve in the military. The government also builds public structures like parks and bridges and roads. This is very important because it helps us work together. So how do we pay for all this? Well, the money for the government comes from taxes. Taxes are payments that people make to the government. Governments are formed to keep people safe and to help people work together. Well, that just about does it. If somebody ever asks you, what does the government do and why is it there? You'll know what to tell them because you watched this video. How cool is that? You have been doing a great job, just like Mike, who's doing these push-ups. You know, he knows it's important to stay fit and to exercise and to stay healthy. And you're, like, exercising your mind right now, which is super cool. And next, we are going to learn about the continents of the world. So what is a continent? A continent is a large mass of land. The world has seven continents. So how many continents are in the world? Yeah, seven. The names of the seven continents are North America, South America, Europe, Africa, Asia, Australia, and Antarctica. So if you're ready, let's learn the continents one by one. The first continent we're going to learn about today is North America. North America is at the top left corner of most world maps. And North America is the third largest continent. It's a pretty big continent. And it's interesting, North America has all of the major biomes, including deserts, grasslands, forests, aquatic, and tundra. A biome is a type of habitat, a natural environment for all living things. Oh wait, hold on a second. Okay. Remember, North America is at the top left of the world map. The next continent we're going to learn about is South America. South America is at the bottom left corner of most world maps, 
just below North America. South America is the fourth largest continent. That means it's a medium-sized continent. Brazil is the largest country in South America. It is more than half the size of the whole continent. You can see Brazil is colored green on this map. Brazil is so big it's almost the size of the United States of America. South America is home to the Amazon River. Only the Nile River in Africa is longer than the Amazon. The Amazon River is incredible. Remember, South America is at the bottom left of the world map. The next continent we're going to talk about is Europe. Europe is at the top middle of most world maps. Europe isn't a very big continent. In fact, Europe is the second smallest continent. And it's interesting, Europe is the only continent that does not have a desert biome. Remember, biome is a habitat, an environment for living things. Forests were the main biome of Europe. 80% of Europe was once covered in forests, but sadly, now only 3% of Europe is covered in forests because so many of the trees have been cut down. Remember, Europe is at the top middle of the world map. The next continent we're going to talk about is Africa. Africa is easy to find on the map because Africa is right in the middle of most world maps. Africa is the second largest continent. Africa is huge. While in many continents, much of the population are in urban areas, the majority of people living in Africa live in rural areas instead of cities. And this is interesting, with 54 countries, more than a quarter of all the countries in the world are in Africa. Remember, Africa is in the middle of the world map. The next continent we're going to talk about is Asia. Asia is at the top right of most world maps. Asia is the largest continent. It's even larger than Africa. It's the biggest continent in the world. Asia has more people living there than any other continent. Over 4.2 billion people live in Asia. So not only is Asia the largest continent, but it also has the most people. Asia is also home to the largest nation in the world, China. 
Remember, Asia is at the top right of the world map. All right, now it's time to talk about the next continent, Australia. Australia is at the bottom right corner of most world maps. Australia is the smallest continent. Australia also has the fewest countries, just one country. Can you guess what the country is? Yeah, the country of Australia. This is interesting. In the continent of Australia, there are more sheep than people. Tons and tons of sheep. Australia is also home to many unique animals, like kangaroos and koalas. Remember, Australia is at the bottom right of the world map. Our last continent is Antarctica. Antarctica is at the very bottom of most world maps. Antarctica is the least populated continent. Antarctica receives visitors but has zero permanent residents. That means no one lives there full time. Antarctica is the only continent completely covered in ice. That means the only biome that Antarctica has is the tundra biome. Remember, Antarctica is at the bottom of the world map. You've done such a great job, now it's time to put you to the test and see how much you learned. We're going to play a quick game called Name the Continent, where you're going to see the continent on the map and you're going to tell us which continent you think it is. Here's the first one. Look at the yellow region. Which continent is that? You can see the seven choices. Just go ahead and say it out loud. Yeah, it's Asia. How about this one? Which continent is the yellow region. It's right in the middle of the map. Yeah, it's Africa. All right, now look at the continent color yellow in this one. It's way at the bottom right corner of the world map. Which continent is it? All right, Australia. How about this one? Look at the yellow region. It's way at the bottom on this one. Which continent is it? Do you have an idea? Yeah, Antarctica. Here's another one. Look at the yellow continent. Which continent is it? 
Uh huh. It's South America. Great job. Here's another one. Which continent is the yellow continent? It's in the top middle of the map. Yeah, it's Europe. Here's our final one. Look at the yellow continent. Which continent is it? Yes, North America. Awesome job. Awesome job. Well, that's all for the continents. We appreciate you playing the game with us and learning with us. And next time somebody asks you about the continents, you'll know all seven of them. Hey, Petey. I know, I know, I heard about your plane. You know, it's a cool plane, you know, and and it's it's neat. I, I don't know if it flies or you you look pretty confident that it's going to fly, which is cool. Yeah, I, I see you. Hello. Hello. Yeah, thanks for waving. Thanks for saying hello. You know, we're actually in the middle of learning. We're, we're in the middle of learning a lot of new cool things right now. So I actually do have to go. Hi, you're still waving. Okay. Um, we're gonna go, uh, because now we need to learn about producers and consumers. We're gonna find out what a producer is and what a consumer is and the difference between the two. Whenever someone buys something, whether it's a good or a service, they are called the consumer. The consumer is the one who buys the good or the service. Now, the person who makes the good or provides the service is called the producer. The person who makes the good or provides the service is called the producer. The person who makes or provides the good or service is the producer. And the person who buys the good or service is the consumer. So the producer makes it. The consumer buys it. For example, here's a picture of a man who's making a pizza. This man is the producer. Now see these people. These people are the consumers. They are the ones that bought the pizza. The producer made the pizza. The consumers buy the pizza. Here's a man who's working very hard. He's making bread. Now I need your help on this one. Do you think this man is a producer or a consumer? He's making the bread. This man is the producer. He's the one that's making the bread. Now, see this lady. Do you think this lady is the producer or the consumer? Yeah, this lady is the consumer. She's going to buy the bread. The baker made the bread, but this lady is going to buy the bread. She is the consumer. Look at this picture. It's a lady giving a haircut to this man. Now, what do you think the lady is? Is the lady the producer or is the lady the consumer? The lady is the one giving the haircut. Yeah, the lady is the producer. Now the man sitting in the chair, is he the consumer or the producer? He's the one buying the haircut. Yeah, the man is the consumer. The one who buys the good or service is the consumer. The one who provides the good or service is the producer. You might not know this, but did you know even kids can be consumers and producers? How cool is that? 
here we've got a picture for you to look at, and we're going to need your help. You see, in this picture, the kids are either producers or consumers. Wonder if you could help me figure out how many are producers and how many are consumers. So how many of these kids are producers? This is a picture of a lemonade stand. How many of the kids are producers? Yeah, two. Two of them are producers. Now this might be easier. How many of the kids are consumers? How many of them are going to buy the lemonade? Yeah, three. Now, do you remember the last time you were a consumer? Think about it for a moment. When was the last time you bought a good or a service? When was the last time you were a consumer? It probably wasn't that long ago. We buy goods and services all the time. Neat. <laughs> now, have you ever been a producer? Many kids haven't been producers before, but you may have been. A common example of kids being a producer is at a lemonade stand. Have you ever been a producer? It's fun. You might want to try it out sometime. Remember, the one who buys the good or service is the consumer. The one who provides the good or service is the producer. So, the next time you're a consumer, you buy something like a burger or a toy or a piece of gum or a haircut, you can know, hey, I was a consumer. And you can point to the person who provided and say, thank you. Thank you for being such a great producer. Here's our friend Fred. We heard that he just took up the harp. He just started playing the harp. Fred, we can't we can't hear you. We're having audio problems with Fred right now. Fred, you look so happy playing. We we can't hear you, okay? You got you got to wear your mic or something. We can't hear the music. Oh, he doesn't even know. He doesn't even know. Isn't that nice? You know, Fred is just plucking away. He's having a good time. You know, kind of like we're having a good time right now with these learning videos. And next, we are going to learn about urban, suburban, and rural areas. These three words, urban, suburban, and rural, describe where we live. Some people live in urban areas, some people live in rural areas, and some people live in suburban areas. We're going to learn all three of these different types of areas so you can describe where you live. The first type of area that we're going to learn is urban urban areas an urban area is a city it is crowded with lots of buildings and people here we have a great example of an urban area the buildings are close together they're very tall lots of people and traffic would come through here it might be very loud this is an urban area a city environment Here's another great example of an urban environment. Look at these tall buildings and lights. This is a city. If it's a city, that means it's an urban area. This is an urban area. Here's another urban area. Lots of buildings, lots of buildings. And they're all close together. Some of them are very tall. You can imagine all the traffic, all the people there. This is an urban area. Here's another example of an urban area, and you see all the people, crowds of people. Urban areas are very crowded. Lots of people, lots of traffic, not just in cars, but foot traffic. Lots of people walking in urban area. Here's another example of an urban area. We know it's an urban area because it's a picture of a city. All cities are urban areas. This is an urban area area tons of buildings many of them tall lots of people lots of traffic 
Here's another great picture of an urban area. All the people, all the buildings, everything's close together. Everything's crowded. This is an urban area. To review, an urban area is a city. It is crowded with lots of buildings and people. The second type of area is suburban. Suburban areas. A suburban area is near a city and it's often called the suburbs. It's less crowded than the city. The buildings are smaller. There are less people than are in the urban areas. Here is an example of a suburban environment. It's less crowded, it's quieter than the urban areas. People live in houses with yards. They usually drive because they aren't able to walk everywhere on foot. Here is another suburban area. As you can see, it's less crowded than the city. The houses have yards, there's more space. It's a little bit more quiet. It's a suburban area. Here's another suburban area, and this is looking up from the sky, and you can see all the homes. All the homes have yards. There's a little bit more space. It's not as crowded. It's not as busy as the urban areas. Here's a picture of a suburban area, and you can see different stores. There's a little bit more space in between them. In an urban area, everything is totally crowded, but in a suburban area, there's a little bit more space. Here's our final picture of a suburban area. You can look and see it's not as crowded as the urban areas. This is a suburban area, just a little more space, a little more quiet. To summarize, a suburban area is near a city and it's often called the suburbs. It is less crowded than the city, the buildings are smaller, and there are less people than are in the urban areas. The third and final type of area is rural. A rural area is away from the cities and suburbs where everything is spread out. It is not crowded. There are not many people or buildings. Here's an example of a rural area. It's a rural area because it's not in the city or the suburbs. Everything is very spread out. There are not a lot of people and not a lot of buildings. Here's another example of a rural area. Look, there aren't that many buildings, that many people. Everything is very spread out. It's rural. Here's another picture of a rural area. Look how spread out everything is. You don't see the crowds, you don't see all the people, you don't see any big buildings. It's a rural area. Look at this picture of a rural area. It's close up to a house, but if you can look in the background, there isn't much of anything else around. Everything is spread out. There aren't that many buildings. It's not in a neighborhood. It's rural. Here's our final picture of a rural area. Look, it's not in a neighborhood. It's not in the city. It's not the suburbs. It's a rural area where everything is spread out. There aren't a lot of people and there aren't a lot of buildings. To summarize, a rural area is away from the cities and suburbs where everything is spread out. It is not crowded. There are not many people or buildings. So where do you live? Do you live in an urban environment, the city? Or do you live in the rural environment where everything's spread out? Or do you live in a suburban area or the suburbs that's near a city but it's not as crowded, it's not as loud as the city? Where do you live? Cool! We're going to find out how much you learn. We're going to play a game that we're calling Urban, Rural, or Suburban. And we're going to show you some areas and you tell us which one it is. Here's our first one. Is this a picture of an urban 
area, a rural area, or a suburban area? Suburban. Great job. Let's try this one. Is this urban, rural, or suburban? Great job! It's an urban area. Let's try this one. Is it urban, rural, or suburban? It's rural! Great job! This one looks like fun. Is it urban, rural, or suburban? Yeah, it's urban. Here's another one. Is it urban, rural, or suburban? Yeah, it's suburban. Look at this one closely. Is this urban, rural, or suburban? Yeah. <laughs> It's another suburban one. We gave you two in a row, didn't we? Try this one now. Is this urban, rural, or suburban? Yes, this is a rural area. Here's our final one. Is this urban, rural, or suburban? It's urban. Awesome job. Wow, you completed the video. That is so impressive. Well, you might notice there's a circle right here on this video page that you can click to subscribe to our channel or you can click this rectangle to go to another one of our videos. But keep learning. Learning is so cool.